Now, there is a lot of stuff about millennials in news about, uh, look, us being lazy, entitled, special little snowflakes, prancing around with our fucking participation trophies. Yeah. That, of course, however, does not fit the reality. In fact, uh, the, some of the youngest employees in the workforce are actually the hardest working of any demographic. Now, what do I base this on? Well, it's a new survey uh, from Project Time Off. Now, that shows that millennials are actually less likely to want to take earned vacation time, making them what we call work martyrs. Now, work martyr, I had never heard of this before, though I do, when, upon seeing the description, of course, of a work martyr, do see like, oh, yeah, I know people who are work martyrs. Um, so it makes sense. Now, let, let, let me tell you the, uh, the definition here. Uh, a work martyr is somebody who doesn't want to take time off because they feel that no one else can do their job in their absence. And they also feel guilty about taking vacation. And they want to see, they do not want to be seen as replaceable or lacking any sort of dedication by their boss. Basically, what they're doing is that they're becoming company slaves. Great. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> now, uh, let me do the breakdown of who are work martyrs. 43% uh, of those surveyed were classified as work martyrs and they were millennials even though of course millennials made up only 29 percent of the 5,000 respondents to this uh, survey now 39 percent of generation xers and only 32 percent of baby boomers thought it was a good idea to be seen as a work martyr by their boss so <clears throat> now wait a minute here now what, what happened boomers only 32 percent of you are work martyrs Hmm. I thought you were the hardest working generation. Now, the reason I say that, of course, is that, look, most boomers are, are good, decent people, right? But there is a subset of baby boomers that just happen to uh, always say horrible things about millennials, how we're so lazy, we're so entitled, um, and that we're the worst generation ever. Well, to those baby boomers, and not to all, but to those, I say, well, fuck you. You are wrong. And I've actually got the data here. Uh, truth is, what happened is that millennials ended up getting dealt a bad hand. And what we're doing is that we're, we're basically trying to make the best of it. After all, we graduated into right in the middle of the Great Recession caused by, you guessed it, baby boomers and some of the older people. Okay. <clears throat> Not all, but some of the older ones. Now, thanks to that whole thing. There were actually less jobs. They were harder to find. And the ones that were available required basically super expensive schooling uh, and degrees. Now, of course, the only way to get these degrees was to take out a large amount of student loan debt as, edu as, as prices for education continued to skyrocket. Now, to show you... To illustrate how much debt people have taken out, the class of 16 is said to have an average of $37,173 in total student loan debt. That is a lot of debt. Now, the survey continues. Coming of age during an economic downturn has consequences. When millennials landed those jobs, they brought with them a strong desire to prove themselves, intensified by the often long and painful search that preceded their first day. Now, I, I've known a lot of educated people, right, who would apply for jobs. I mean, sometimes three, four, five jobs a day, okay, every day for months and months at a time, sometimes even going into the years, okay, and they didn't get these jobs, right? In fact, most of the time, their applications were outright thrown out, and when they did get an interview, which was very, very rare, likely they would usually not get a callback or a, I'm sorry, we've already filled this position, and no, the people who were educated, they did not have English degrees or liberal arts degrees. They actually had a lot of business degrees or technology degrees. So stuff that you would think that it was in demand. But no, of course, uh, there were just so many people <clears throat> trying to get back into the workforce and trying to get into the workforce and just not enough jobs for them. And there was so much competition. Now, interestingly enough, the survey notes that all of this occurred during cha amidst changing American work culture and attitudes toward taking time off. 
Now, if for, for example, in 2015, 55% of Americans did not use any or all of their vacation time, leaving about 658 million vacation days on the table. Jesus, Jesus, Lord mercy. Now, look, I'm sure some of that is due to the fact that there's a lot of people out there that can't afford to take vacation. They can't afford to take vacation time. I'm sorry, like, I, I need to work. I need to get some of these overtime hours. I can't afford to take a vacation. Or where am I going to go? You could do a staycation, which for me would be great, but for a lot of other people, wouldn't be any fun. Oh, I'm taking time off work where I could be making more money um, and just sitting on my ass. Well, that's not fun. I might as well just go to work. Now, <clears throat> there, there's actually more. Uh, now, 43% of people who are stressed at work uh, think it's good to be seen as a work martyr. And 48% of those unhappy with their professional success also think it's a positive thing to put work ahead of their personal life. Now, that uh, that is not healthy. <laughs> uh, that's actually kind of a bad thing. These are the people that are like, I hate my job and I'm stressed out by my job, but I think you should put your job above your family. Don't do it bad idea and uh i'll get to why now first of course uh the demographic breakdown of, of of people who consider themselves work martyrs is actually primarily female 52 percent 55 percent are married so look even married people are essentially putting their uh careers over their families now for me personally i wouldn't qualify myself as a work martyr and here's why because it doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't actually help you. Work martyrs were actually found to be less likely to report receiving a bonus, meaning that their perce uh, perceived commitment to the job is not actually valued or is not as, as valuable as they think. They're also more likely to be stressed out when they're at home and they're at work. Now, me personally, I work a lot. Okay, I put in about 10 hours a day just to putting the show together. Okay, researching, filming, editing, doing the broadcasting, all the different social media accounts, doing all the things that I need to do to make the show work. And I like what I do, so I don't really mind. But I couldn't imagine standing at a place and being a work martyr working 10 hours a day at some place that I absolutely despised. But I've done that. And I've actually hated a lot of the jobs, most of the jobs that I've worked at. I mean, look, I've worked at uh, retail, I've worked in factory work, and uh, it's factory work's depressing uh, and very, very boring. <laughs> I did not like that, and there wasn't a lot of room for advancement. So, <laughs> no way was I going to be a work martyr at that kind of place. But anyway, uh, so what the survey said on this whole thing isn't at all that surprising. It concluded that the work martyr mindset is fundamentally flawed and poisonous to company cultures. The negative results of such thinking should be presented to work martyrs so that they may reconsider their approach to taking time off. Wow. <clears throat> now look, again, I'm not a work martyr. I'm kind of glad that I'm not. But back when I was working in those, uh, you know, the factory and in, in, in retail, uh, my philosophy before working for myself was, the boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time. Okay. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things. Like taking time off to not work while at work. But seriously though, um, I didn't really care about a company or my boss if they didn't actually care about me. And that's, that's unfortunately what a lot of work martyrs are seeing. They're putting in all this time. They're putting in all this effort and they're, they're going above and beyond. In order to get what? Nothing. There's nothing in return. Boss is like, oh, yeah, good for you. You're not going to get a bonus. We don't give a shit about you. We don't really care that you put in all this extra time. In fact, now we expect you to put in more time and more work because you've shown that you're willing to do it. Here's more, here's more responsibility at the same amount of pay. Being a work martyr is not a good thing. Now, let me give you the opposite. Now, a little bit of a personal story, I guess. Now, I used to work, as I said, in factories and retail. And there was one job that I had uh, where I was in the back. I was unloading trucks, right? 
I was unloading groceries. I was unloading uh, general merchandise. Okay. Now I had a department head that was a pretty fucking cool guy. And this is the kind of guy, uh, the kind of boss that everybody wants. This guy would come up and he would work right alongside you to get things done. You needed help. He was there. He would help you. He would take time away from his duties to actually help if you needed to do, if you needed it. And the guy was great attitude, fun guy, uh, super nice. And uh, look, you could joke around with him, bullshit. I mean, just a, just a really good guy, okay? And he did not care what we did as long as we got the job done. And with a cool boss like that, you want to get the job done. And you want to get it done right. You want to get it done fast. That is a good boss. Now, of course, the company, the corporation, and all the other people uh, that were in department heads, they didn't like him because he wasn't an ass kisser. So he didn't ask his corporate, which was also another good reason to like this guy. So for me, I felt pretty loyal to that. I was like, this is a good guy. I would volunteer for extra hours. I would get more responsibility. Um, I would even go, uh, I even got to train, uh, I, I got trained on uh, driving Hilo, <laughs> which is a scary thought. But yes, I was trained to drive. Uh, I did it, I got trained, uh, I got licensed, and I only hit one door. <laughs> but uh, I, that, I was dedicated, I put in that extra hours, I, I, I put in that extra time, because I felt like I, I don't know, this guy, this, this, this guy, not the company itself, but my boss cared about our well-being as workers, and they tried to help us out. Now, that seems to be contrary to a lot of other bosses. A lot of other employers that I've run into. And that's sad because we actually need more of that guy, not less. Now, the whole point is, though, is that for the right person, more than happy to be somebody called, you know, that's a work martyr. But for the wrong company, of course not. And millennials, we need to determine who's worth our time, who's worth our extra effort. And not just blindly go, well, it took me months to get this job, so I'm just going to work my ass off for no uh, no return, for nothing. Not even a thank you, not even a bonus, nothing. And not take this vacation time that I earned. No, screw that. That's not going to work. <laughs> and look, here's the other thing, right? You do that. Well, especially at a job that you don't like and something that stresses you out. Well, it's going to make somebody incredibly unhappy. It's going to make them cranky. It's going to be make them resentful. They're going to end up being pissed off all the time. And nobody wants to work with somebody who's angry all the time, too. Because that pisses off the rest of the coworkers. So, but look, I understand that there are some reasons where people would want to be work martyrs. I get that, right? Again, I, I can't afford to take time off. I got bills to pay. Where am I going to go? I totally understand that, right? But again... Millennials, fellow millennials, doing this just ends up leading to being taken advantage of by most companies. So my advice is if you're going to do something, if you're going to bust your ass for a company, at least do it for a company that takes care of you, a company and a job that you love. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent non-corporate media, go to our Patreon page and become a patron, patreon.com slash TYTNation.